Welcome to the From Concealment Podcast, the show for firearm enthusiasts who like to shoot, train, carry, and compete. Get ready for some shooting and sight, firearm and accessory reviews, and of course, insight on concealed carry. And now broadcasting from behind enemy lines in the From Concealment studio, it's Pete Mitchell and Dan Sams. Hey, Freedom, Freedom, Freedom Nation. This is Pete Mitchell. And I'm identifying as vaccinated. (laughs) Oh, man. I tell you, you know, I I just texted uh, Dan before we did this uh, podcast. We're a little bit later than than normal. I, you know, bad news for me and my my best friend from college. He was the best man at my wedding. Um. We used to joke because I wasn't the best man at his wedding because he, he, he had two brothers. So he's like, I had to pick my brother. He's my yeah. brother. And then, yeah. And then uh, he and his brother had a falling out. And I don't think they've talked in years or something. And I'm like, see, you should have picked me. <laughs> I'm still here. Well, anyway, um, unfortunately he's uh, uh, he passed away Friday due to complications from COVID uh, oh, pneumonia. Man, I'm sorry. Yeah. So, uh, I just, his wife just texted me and, you know, gave me the lowdown and, you know, hit me and my wife like a ton of bricks. Cause you know, he's one of my oldest friends. So, I mean, we've said this before on the podcast, it's not that we don't believe that COVID isn't real. Yeah. Of course we believe it's real. I had it. I know it's real. Yeah. And, um, unfortunately it does hit the uh, the African American community especially hard, uh, and my my best friend was black. Um, so I mean, on, on one hand, it's kind of like I can't believe how young he was, right? Because yeah. he had to have been forty six, would be my guess, because I was the youngest. And I'm turning forty six in a few weeks, so it's either forty five or forty six, right, right in that range. Yeah, which is really young considering you know everything, but uh, complications from COVID. Man. Pneumonia, uh, passed away. He's got five kids, huge family, right? So, I mean, it's just, yeah. it's a heartbreak all the way around. Uh, and then we start looking at, and I don't know if he was vaccinated or not, right? I have no idea what his his status was on that. Um, and then we, we hear President Biden last week, you know, basically, to me, I was like, he just admitted that the vaccines don't work. Because he said, you know, the vaccinated people are something from the unvaccinated people. Basically, you know, they're being threatened by the unvaccinated. And it's like, okay, then you're telling me that the vaccination doesn't work. Because if the vaccination works, it doesn't matter what anybody else does or has. You're vaccinated. Problem solved. Yeah. And this this whole totalitarian, we're going to, you know, basically you can't go feed your family. You can't go to work. You can't work with the U S government in any way, shape or form, unless you got your papers that show you've been vaccinated. I mean, it's like, what kind of, how did this go from, you know, 14 days to flatten the curve to show us your papers? I know. And that's what, what happened. It's exactly what it is. When you remember when we talked about, um, I mean, I think it was, and I think we were pretty explicit early on that like, Hey, the, uh, this is not going to be 14 days. Like once they've taken power, they, they don't give it up. And, um, and I remember how, when, back when you would say things like that a year and a half ago, people were like, quit with your conspiracy theories. And it's like, I'm just stating the facts, man. This is, and now here we are where they're forcing it. Like how many things where they said, well, we won't do this. And then they big fat did it anyway, three months later, six months later, and every one of us that says, well, here's what they're about to do. They called us conspiracy theorists and alarmist and crazy. And now here it's happening. And now they're calling us conspiracy theorists for not wanting to get on board. Right. And um, it is, it's infuriating. I mean, there's just not another word for it. It's infuriating. And um, I tell you what, man, it's people getting real itchy where I'm, where I'm from. People getting real itchy about it. Yeah. I um. I am. I, I have people saying, "All right, so what's what's what? What are we going to do? What, what's the plan?" And I'm like, "Man, I'm not the one with a plan." Um, I'll tell you right now, like, be armed, be ready to defend your family and and your neighbor. But I don't have a plan. Um, I'm going to resist. I'm going to refuse. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to resist masks, man. I'm going to fight anything I can. 
Um, cause part of this is that we went along with too much crap. Now they, now they know they can get away with stuff. That they shouldn't be away, able to get right. away. So and you look at the whole world, the whole world is in this craziness. And the thing that I don't get, it's not, <clears throat> this is not Ebola, right? Yeah. This is not a 98% kill rate. It's literally the exact opposite. Yeah. And I, I'm dumbfounded by it. I'm, I'm literally just dumbfounded by, I don't I don't get it. I mean, is it bad? Yeah. When I had it, it sucked. Have you had it yet? Well, no. you'll get it because everyone's going to get it. <laughs> yeah. oh, I, I should say, the way I, it is. I should say not that I know of. I haven't had it that I know of. I, I think I would have known um, as they talk a little bit about supposedly it being here before they thought right. I, I was ill before they thought it was here in a way that was similar but still not very bad so like I, I keep saying not that i know of right um so yeah but um man there's so much well one thing i'll point out the i'm i, I think i've even said hopefully we've made this clear we're not against the vaccine even i'm certainly against it being forced yeah um i the, i think there's a time and a place for it i, I mean yeah well I, honestly i've said this before i think my mother-in-law should have already been vaccinated. She wasn't. Yeah. She got the COVID and it hit her like way too hard. And now we got to wait, you know, what is it like 90 days after you've had COVID before you're supposed to get the vaccine. Yeah. And so she's like, well, I want yeah. the vaccine now because I don't want to go through this again. I'm like, I don't blame you. I would have done it if I was your age in your condition Yeah, at the get go. Well, and anytime we're looking at it, there's a, there's a risk benefit thing with anything. And um, just no matter how you cut it, there has not been a longitudinal study on any of these vaccines. We just acknowledge that. Um, And so that immediately brings risk into it because we don't know what the long term effects are. Um, We are also seeing some not so great results from it. They're already like booster this booster that. And so it's one of those things like, hey, it might be worthwhile. Like You've got to weigh the risk benefit. And that's part of being an American. You're supposed to have the freedom to be able to do that. That's part of having authority over your own body. You're supposed to be able to make that decision. And um, I don't know if you all saw, um, I just shared it in the, um, in the chat, uh, but there was a Facebook um, post from some news channel, uh, some ABC news seven somewhere. And they said, Hey, I would love to hear about your, any of your unvaccinated friends that have passed away. We're going to do a story about it. And people jumped on there. And we're talking thousands of posts saying, why, why in the heck aren't you going to write about my friend that had the, uh, um, the vaccine and still died or had right. this reaction from, and it's, I mean, it's thousands and thousands of people saying essentially F you, um, that there's bad results from the, from the vaccine as well. So what's wrong with you people? Um, and I think that's the kind of stuff like, please don't just hate the vaccine, but be wise that like they're there it's not perfect it doesn't fix everything there are some dangers in it and um yeah i'm i'm avoiding it because i think i'm going to do better with my own immunity and that's my decision but i recognize other people might it might be the right thing for others and so yeah yeah see the way i look at the vaccine is like i said before if you're high risk you should take it i mean you really should and if you're a lower risk person and you want to take it, I, again, don't care if you want to take it, go for it. Um, I considered myself low risk. It hit me hard. Mm-hmm. Definitely did not feel like I was going to die, which I've heard from some people who are like, can barely breathe. It didn't hit my lungs nearly as hard as it does everyone else. Uh, you know, technically now I am vaccinated naturally. Because I got the antibodies rolling around in my blood at this point because mm-hmm. I fought it and won. Well, and and we understand the antibodies from having it and beating it are better than the antibodies, of course, that you get from the vaccine. Yeah, and we we do know with COVID, uh, some of the testing with other COVID, uh, other attempts at uh, COVID vaccines. One of the things they would run into is that if you'd had the vaccine and got exposed to the virus within a certain window. Uh, and this is not for this one. It's for for previous tests. But of course, we don't have long term tests for this one. But that um, your body could actually kind of short circuit on the whole thing and think 
you know, it could see a slightly different variant, think that it's immunized against that, think using that term loosely. And essentially you had a, you have a worse case from a slight variation than you would have if you hadn't had the vaccine at all. Um, and oh, there's a technical term for it and I forget what it is. And so in any case, better to have beaten it with your body in most cases, if you're healthy and whatever. And again, it comes back to if you are at risk, it might be better to get the vaccine. Mm. All this, mind you, we're not legal professionals or medical professionals. We're just pointing out that like we're having to make these decisions as individuals. We're having to weigh out all this information. You should do the same thing. And when the pressure is on where somebody's saying, well, if you don't get this vaccine, then you're not going to be able to work at your job. Now you don't get to make a decision weighing the options anymore. Now the option is I've got to figure out how to feed my family. Now I would recommend start a business, start a side hustle. Um, this is a good time. You already be thinking about that. You want to be in business for yourself if you can. Um, most of us can be, by the way. Um, anyway, all that said, that's just, it's nuts. Like who'd have thought we would be here? Uh, we did, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, but you're, you're hundred percent right. Cause it's funny when I look at this and you know, they're like, uh, oh, Biden with his, well, look, I'm going to make OSHA enforce this rule. <laughs> it's like, Dude, this is this is how dictators happen in a republic. Well, I can't do it directly, so I'm going to make OSHA do it because I get to appoint somebody over there, I'm sure. Right. I don't know. President gets to appoint so many dang positions. I have no idea, but I'm assuming he gets to appoint somebody and that person sitting there going, well, I want to keep my job. So, OK, what rule do you want me to, to put into place? And so they're going to force employers that have more than 100 employees that they either have to have everybody vaccinated or a weekly test. It's like, first of all, you're putting more work on an employer. And secondly, there are HIPAA laws in place. Like you can't force an employer to violate the HIPAA law. It doesn't work like that. Even OSHA can't force them to violate HIPAA. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's a rule versus a law. That's the, and it's not a rule. It's a, you know, it's a, we say we have the authority, therefore we have the authority kind of rule. It's not an elected rule. It's not, you know, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm getting at here? The, you what, you're, what you're getting at is that it's meaningless from a legal perspective. From a legal perspective. Right? Absolutely. It's, the only thing that gives it any power is that people obey. And I sit here and I look at the whole thing and I'm like, okay, well, I'm kind of safe at the moment because I'm self-employed. I have my own company, do my own thing. I don't answer to anybody as far as, you know, what's your health status? I don't sell to the government. And I'm like, but what happens when all of a sudden, oh, well, if you have a merchant account, which is how you process credit cards, you need to prove to us that you're vaccinated. You want to uh, use the banking system and have a business account. You got to prove that you're vaccinated. And people go, oh, it'll never go like that. What do you mean it'll never go like that? They just made employers basically ask their employees yeah. for their papers. Of course it can go that way and, and it probably, probably will, will if enough people have a side hustle. Yeah, it, it probably will. Well, the reality is this is not about the whole thing of like throwing around like the science. Um, scientifically, we're, we're pushing a vaccine that hasn't gone through a longitudinal study. So if you want to talk about trusting Explain the science, a longitudinal study, essentially, it's like think long term, like in a longitudinal study, you are looking at the long term effects over years. And there are a lot of vaccinations that I mean, it's it's three, four years before they can get an approval, maybe longer because they've got to prove that there's not long term negative effects from this or if they are that they're they're minimal and you know, like. And this whole thing has been rushed through. And mind you, they think about the fact that they haven't been able to get COVID vaccines ever before. We've tried and right. it hasn't worked. Now, suddenly we were able to get one really freaking fast. That should terrify everybody. I shouldn't say terrify. That should be a big red flag. And that's kind of where I'm at is I'm like, hey, like, good, like way to go. Like I'm, I'm, I'm glad we're testing this thing. I'm even for people saying like, Hey man, I'm going to be the first ones to, uh, to test it out. Cool, man. Like I actually think you could, you could call that brave that it's like, Hey, we haven't done a longitudinal study, but we're trying to, I'm going to take the risk with my body and we're going to see if this thing works. Oh, man, cool, man. Way to go. Like I'm not hating on the vaccine. Let's just face facts. They haven't been able to pull this off 
longitudinally that I know of ever, at least in some of the the ones that are closer to the COVID-19. Now here we're pushing this one through and it's like, guys, like uh, this is, this could be fine, but the stats aren't great. You know, it's like the guy who's on his fourth marriage and, and the fourth lady's like, yeah, you know, but you know, he's really made a lot of changes this time. And it's like, well, cool, maybe, but his track record, like you, this marriage might go fine, but the track record is bad. Can we just acknowledge that? Like, you know, maybe we don't want to like come and give a lot of presents at this particular reception, <laughs> you know, right. like that's where we're at. So, and the fact that it's being pushed, it's like, well, if it's that good, why are we forcing people? Like, why, if it's that good, like, why can't we just let people want this? Um, yeah. And then if it's that good, why is it that now we're pushing boosters a few well, months later? Why is it that we're worried about the unvaccinated if it's that good for the vaccinated? Why are the vaccinated in any danger whatsoever? Yeah. If yeah. the unvaccinated are the ones yeah. that they should be the ones that are at yeah. risk. Shouldn't I be the one if I'm unvaccinated? Shouldn't I be the one that's scared for my health? Because sh- shouldn't you be virtually immune and fine? Like, why are you upset that I'm not vaccinated? Whatever happened to the herd immunity thing, which I know we're a ways from that anyway. But the reality is hospitalization, hospitalization is up more than it was a year ago. And look at how when we didn't have vaccinated. a vaccine. Yeah. Yeah. So like. What does that tell? So like, wasn't the whole point to get a vaccine out so everything would be okay? Why is it more people are in the hospital now? You can't blame that on the unvaccinated. We were all unvaccinated a year ago. Right. I mean, if that was the problem, this is the stuff that pisses me off. Like, if I'm just being really honest, when people are like, trust the science, and I'm like, I am. (laughs) Like, I'm the one actually looking at this and saying, like, here's how we test things. Here's some data. Like, I'm not an expert. I'm not, but I'm just a regular guy that's able to look at this and be like, okay, we didn't have the <laughs> have it a year ago. We do have it, it now. And I it's love worse. it when people are like, like I got into this on on Facebook, who knows when. And I was like, there's all these studies that show masks don't help. And the guy's like, there are no studies. Wait a second, there are no studies. If there's no studies, then why are we wearing masks? Because yeah. you can't, there's no study that says that it helps. Yeah. Yeah. Either there's a study that says yes or a study that says no, but you can't argue that there's no study and then try to push something. And there's plenty of studies that show that it, I mean, because it was done on influenza, it didn't help stop the spread of influenza, it didn't do anything like that. And that, I mean, that's what we have to use because we didn't have COVID, right? And basically yeah. the flu. We got to look at the studies that were done on masks and the flu. But when that became inconvenient, they took that all away. Yeah. Literally off the CDC website and everything else because it didn't fit the narrative, which to me, I'm kind of wondering, why are they pushing masks so much other than the scared people want it? Because let's take a look at England, which has got more cameras per square foot than any other place on the planet. Don't you like, isn't the point of all those cameras is you get to see who's there and what they're doing. And you get to, and now we got everybody with masks on and you, like you lose a lot of that. And I'm thinking is the, did the government not think this one through? Like I am totally the guy that wants to wear a mask. And the only reason at this point, I told my wife this last night, I go, the only reason I refuse to get the vaccine now is because they said I have to have it. Like, yeah. If it wasn't for that, I'd be like, well, I don't really care. But now that you're forcing me, screw you. I'm not getting the vaccine. Good. Good for you, Pete. Good for you. That's and the I'm, right I'm, I'm naturally, uh, uh, you know, immunized now. So I'm totally not worried about it. So you are seriously in better shape than you would be had you gotten the, the vaccine. I well, mean, they yeah, do I say that if I get the vaccine now, I'm supposed to be like a superhuman. Like, have you seen those studies that are showing no, if you had COVID and then you get the two shots? Like they're, they're, they're saying you've got like the super immunity against yeah. it. So speaking of such things, how about Joe Rogan, man? Do you know? Oh, yeah. Him? Like the Iver. So here's, so talk about a misinformation campaign that went out surrounding that. So he gets on Ivermectin, right? Well, and a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Um, and some other stuff, but like the Ivermectin was the one that, that was getting news, right? Because, and they were calling it a, a horse dewormer. As if it was the most insane thing that he would, he would ever take this, like, mind you, like 
this is a regularly prescribed drug. Like this is like on a list of like this. Is I got it prescribed when I was uh, when I had the COVID. Good for you, man. Well, and so here he beats it in three days while everybody is screaming, oh, it's just a horse dewormer. And it's like, you know, in 2015, this won like a Nobel Prize. Like this is a an award winning drug that helps a lot of people for a lot of things. And and he kicks COVID in three days, which awesome, man. He was but on talk about the misinformation uh, on it all. He was on the I can't what is it mono something crazy word antibiotics mm-hmm. that in Florida they've set up clinics free clinics to give you those antibiotics. Uh, the Santos, the governor there, was getting all kinds of crap from the CDC, and you know oh, how dare you do that? How dare you do that? Only now they're like, oh, uh, actually that does seem to help. So <laughs> we're going to go neutral on this, yeah. uh, you know, as opposed to being against it. And it's like. Like they, I, I mean, if you follow the money, that's the only reason I could see them doing what they're doing. Because why, why in the world do you let people suffer and die, as opposed to not trying to throw the book at it? Anything you can think of, and oh. ivermectin. There have been studies that show that it does help with um, different uh, viruses, HIV. Um, a couple of the other ones I, I don't remember because I remember when I was thinking about taking it because I was sick, I was doing all this, you know, you know, uh, internet research, right? So I mean, not not like I'm a doctor or anything, but it's like okay, there there are there is evidence that it helps with viruses as well, not just the parasites. So we know it's also one of the safest drugs. It's technically safer than aspirin. Why in the world would you not prescribe that to people? Yeah. And just take a shot. It's not going to hurt them. That's the thing. It, it won't hurt them to take yeah. it. Yeah. And then you got Rolling Stone who comes out with this article. So many people are in the hospital because they're overdosing on ivermectin that there's a waiting line and people can't get in there with. And it was a total lie. And instead yeah. of retracting it, they just said, oh, oops. Yeah, we were we were wrong on that. Yeah. We were so wrong. that right there, that's a misinformation campaign. That is propaganda. Um, it's evil. And and. By the way, you were talking about what reason other than money. There might be a few, but the reality is when we're talking about $100 billion being thrown around, like, and essentially three companies having like cornering the market on, on, a, on a drug that's being pushed globally, a vaccine, globally. we're talking about a massive amount of money. Of course, they would happily watch people die. Um, Little side note, uh, I think I mentioned on uh, if any of you uh, follow my personal pages and you've watched Connie, the conspiracy corn, uh, you know about the I tried to post one of those in the uh, Telegram group. And that's when I realized your account was private. So it wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to I'll have to make some of those public because they're just too much fun. But yeah, seriously, if you Google the uh, the largest criminal fine in history, Pfizer was the one that had to pay it because they were falsifying information. Now, think about that. If they were willing to, to pay, well, first of all, to do something so bad that it was going to cost them that much money, right? They were willing to be that Which wicked. Which honestly wasn't that much to them. Exactly. Just because it's the largest fine. It's Doesn't just the cost that. of doing business is how they look at it. Exactly. So now think about it. If they're willing to do that, and now they've got their hands on something that is going to allow them to have global control. Yeah, man, they'll let people die over that. Um, I know, I know plenty of doctors that are like, listen, man, we can, we can cure cancer, but there's no money in it. There's money in treating cancer. Um, and, um, I have had, I think it depends uh, on the type of cancer. It does. Um, now I will tell you though, when, when a pretty renowned doctor, I've had a couple of interesting clients and a pretty renowned doctor just looks at me straight and he's like, yeah, we can cure a lot of cancer, but people don't, there's not money in it. So you're not going to have people really interested in doing what we need to do for that. And he was just dead serious about it. Like now he's not a cancer doctor, so don't go and kill him. But he's like, yep. He's like, I've seen the data. We can, we can fix a lot of things that we don't fix because the money is in treating it, not in fixing it. Mm. So also, why would you release a vaccine that actually got rid of something when you can release one that maybe does a little bit, but then that's going to need a booster. It's like, you know, (laughs) they were screaming booster like early, early on. And I think think honestly, I think, Pfizer and what is it? Moderna, Moderna, however they pronounce their name. Mm -hmm. I think they're both like, wait a second. Why just take it once? 
when we can do two shots yeah. and get the entire nation twice. Like literally that's what I think they were thinking. I don't think anyone was like, yeah. we need to have two shots from the beginning. I think it was like, wait a second. Why don't we take another shot? Yeah. And that's why they're like, oh, boosters. Yeah. I think we should have some boosters. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, Hey, windows 95, it's going to have some bugs. Cause you're going to need windows 98. Exactly. <laughs> yep. No, all this is nuts, man. And the fact that things are being pushed and that people are still so blind, man. The nice thing is I've loved seeing some of the uh, some of the states come out and just say, go pound sand. We're not going to stand for this in our state and um, support that, man. Get out and and support your senators, your governors, anybody that's standing for freedom, your mayors. Actually, freaking call your mayor and be like, you make a stand like you know, if you have enough mayors taking a stand. It's it's something um, that that kind of stuff. And you can enact actual change at the local level. Now, unfortunately, things get corrupt at the local level, too. But spread the word, brothers and sisters. Um, yeah. Anyway, especially why? depending on. Uh, what your local level is like uh, Long Beach here, I mean, Long Beach, <laughs> it's so corrupt. Like, oh, my gosh, it's so yeah. corrupt. Uh you know, the we had this one mayor in Long Beach for the longest time. In fact, I think she like termed out. And so they wrote her in and she won again, which I didn't even know oh. you could do. Oh, dear. But she was in tight with Hillary and they were like giving away parts of Long Beach to the to China. For, and I'm like, oh, geez, this is it's so corrupt, man. We're so corrupt on oh, almost man. every level. Yeah, we're, we're seeing some of that corruption here, man. It's it's pretty bad. Um, even in our little tiny town, nice, beautiful town, um, all kinds of weird things going on. And um, they keep calling. And what they do is they'll call an emergency, um, something shady. They need to put a pipeline through somebody's personal property without permission. It's, oh, we call an emergency. Somebody comes to a meeting of the township um, and you're the, uh, the city, uh, you know, board of directors or whatever. And. You know, somebody's got questions, they go into an emergency executive session and send everybody out like that kind of crap. Yeah. Which, you know what? That makes everybody itchier. Yeah. Like, um, like at some point, like look through the tyrants of history. And unfortunately, it, it wasn't always good guys slaying tyrants for just being clear about it. But man, tyrants going long enough, people get fed up with it. And um, so I'm yeah. like, stop making people itchy. And then we start looking at things and it's like, okay, um, all this is going down. And then we got the CDC who all of a sudden is trying to say that gun deaths are a health issue because it's like, they can't get around the second amendment, which just annoys the hell out of them. And so now they're trying to turn it into a health issue. And I'm like, dude, all you're making me do is buy more guns, more ammo underground. Because, dude, it's coming. It's just a matter of time. It's coming. Yep. Well, let me just tell you, man. So Friday after the big announcement, Thursday evening. So first of all, we uh, I was at a I was at a church thing uh, Thursday night, and people were talking about it there. Like a lot of freedom loving people there. Friday morning, I was going to go and spend a day working on school stuff, and. Um, Dropped in, had I dropped something off for a client, and um, the client was with uh, the two people in their in their place of business, and there were two other people there. So it was four of them. All four of them made comments about joining or starting a militia. Um, I, a few minutes later, I sit down to have coffee somewhere. Somebody else comes up to me, similar conversation. And I'm like, it's not nine thirty in the morning yet, and now five people we've had discussions about this. And I'm like, these are not like none of these are radical people. Like these are businessmen. These are um, I recognize that I hang out with some crazy people that, yes, you would ex you would expect me to have some of those conversations. The kind of people that you once would have expected. Yeah, they're already past that. We're ready to go. Um, there's a whole lot of people you never would expect that are are showing up and saying, like, I um, I don't want to be left out of this. And I'm like, well, I'm not saying that there isn't this. But why don't you just get yourself a good fighting weapon and a 300 round loadout and uh, and learn how to use it? Yeah, man. Train, you know the things I'm telling train, train. 
I'm telling people right now. I can't now, think though. of a single militia I would ever want to be a part of because I'm thinking of the idiots I've seen at the range going, yeah, those are the guys in the militia. Yeah. They're going to shoot me. I, I don't want to be anywhere near them. Yeah. Well, so here's what I'm telling people. And I'll tell I'll tell the Freedom Nation this too. Um, get your load out ready. Get a three-day pack. Um, you need to have some ideally level four, but at least three plus armor. Um, mag pouches, um, all that kind of stuff. A little side note, you need to have a gun belt that the idea of a gun belt is if you have to drop your um, your plate carrier that you can carry on the fight with what you've got on your waist. And so you should have a sidearm, three mags for that sidearm, one or two rifle mags, uh, a dump pouch, right? Um, maybe your IFAC. I carry my IFAC there. I, I like it there better than I do on anywhere on my, my chest carrier. Um, so all that said, though, um, get, get ready for that. And then practice mag well preloads. Man, if you can practice mag changes, you can do that for free in your house. Because most people think training, and then they go and look at how expensive it is to do a training, and you're going to burn you know, a 1,000 rounds of ammo that weekend. And I'm like, I understand. First of all, get there if you can anyway. But if all you do is practice mag changes, get out, practice some dry fire, ready ups or whatever, do as much as you can as that. I, I know a special forces guy that says that gets you 90% of the way. Do that training while you can for free. And then when you get to the range, you're going to make the most out of the range time. Um, but do what you can to train. So brothers and sisters, be training, man. Um, we need some training out there. Yeah. Oh, and actually, speaking of training, I don't know how you're doing on time, Pete. You doing okay? Yeah, I'm all right. So um, have you seen these videos floating around of there is a semi-famous YouTuber out there, um, gun-ish. I think he does more than guns, but he did some kind of a training. And there's pictures of him with his training class. And they're all holding their guns like this or like they've got their hands. That, I like, didn't know that was a YouTuber that did it over a show i'm assuming he's a youtuber i think they said he has over a million followers on youtube as i understand right and then i forget what on instagram um but you have all this going on and like one of the girls is holding the gun like this there's a guy standing yes right i saw there. that one <laughs> i mean it's scary and any of us who have had even the most basic safety training cringe at, i mean because like i mean like a negligent discharge at simultaneously would have probably killed all, but maybe one or two of them right there. And of course here, the instructor is like, you know, grinning sappily in front of all of them, taking the picture, you know, selfie mode. Oh, so just pointing out like train, but train with people who know their stuff just because right. somebody has a shop or is on YouTube or has an Instagram channel. And just because they have a million followers does not mean that they actually know what they're doing. Yeah. And so um, train with somebody. We at Lake Erie Arms, we, we use only military and law enforcement uh, people with actual experience. And I don't think that the law enforcement guys always know their stuff, but we get guys who do know their stuff. Um, go to a reputable place with a good reputation and people who really know their stuff. Um, because, man, um, that picture scared me. And yeah. um, that is not good. And there's a whole lot of first-time gun buyers. There's a lot of people out there that have, that bought a gun that have still never shot it, right? Bought a gun during the pandemic, still haven't shot it. They haven't had the chance. They haven't wanted to pay for ammo. And now they're signing up for some class, and they just you know Googled and found some famous guy. And they probably spent stupid money on the thing. So anyway. now, I would I would tell everyone on uh, in Southern California, my two favorite places to go for training. Mike Hernandez at FT3 Tactical. Mm -hmm. um, he's got uh, a lot of courses. You can find it there on the FT3 Tactical website. Um, I'm trying to think what they they call them. I know there's ladies LSL ladies shooting league. So if you just want to go with other women, ladies. And that way, you know, maybe it might be more comfortable for you. Maybe you just want to do that. Um, there's a lot of combo classes. And then there, I can't remember what they call the men's group, but uh, probably like men's shooting league for all I know. Um, and also uh, Fast OC. Go to the Fast OC website. Uh, that's where I do most of my handgun challenges, but they have a ton of training classes. And all of his guys, I believe, are federal. Um, 
Mm-hmm. I don't think any of them were police. Uh, I remember one of the guys was an air marshal and he used to train air marshals. And so like, he was like, look, if you're on the ground and you got your gun, you got to hold your rack and push it forward. Right. Cause if you got a, like a Glock, if it's pushed back just slightly, it's out of battery and it's not going to mm-hmm. fire and you got to hold that thing up. And then you pull the trigger. <laughs> and I remember Lance was like, okay, we're not having people hold their slide and pull the trigger. <laughs> Cause you do that when you about ready to die. It's like, okay, you know, I'll take the fact that I'm going to lose some skin on my hand here, but uh, yeah. You know, I, we're not in a, a, a live or die situation on the ground, on my back, Man. which, by the way, one of the reasons why uh, revolvers are great, you can push that sucker right up to someone who's on top of you mm-hmm. and don't have to worry about it being out of battery and, and so, stop the threat. When I did my defensive class, uh, my CCW class, it was before I don't think Lake Erie Arms existed at the time. Um, it was a long time ago I took this class. And the instructor was giving just some general safety uh, defense instruction. And one of the things he talked about is if you are, if you don't have a weapon and somebody is pointing a weapon at you, one form of defense, and he didn't necessarily say it was the, it was a good one, but one form of defense is to push that thing out of battery. Like just put your hand right on the barrel of that thing, push that uh, if they're, if it's an automatic, but, and so what he did is he actually had somebody with an, um, and unloaded and he had him hold it just right. And he's like, look at this. He's like, you can't pull the trigger when we do this. And, um, and you can technically do the same thing with a revolver. You've got to grip the side of that cylinder, but you, I mean, you've got to have some grip for that. Yeah. But you don't have to be that strong to push a Glock out of battery. No, um, not at so all. Hopefully you're never in that scenario. Hopefully but you're never that close. Cause nice little tip just in case. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, I've got company coming behind me. Was that a dog? That's that's my dog, Sam. Oh, there you go. Hey, buddy. Good stuff. I'm, I'm such a dog person. This this dog right here is an awesome dog. He is. I can tell it's a hunting dog. Oh man, yeah. I, I, I don't. That's so not a hunting dog. dog. That's that's a. Let me curl up with you on the couch, dog. Yeah. That's you know what though? Is. Like he'll 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 go after stuff. We can. Oh yeah. He'll. I mean, he's a retriever, so. Um, actually fun story of him catching a squirrel one time and they don't like retrievers don't clomp down. I mean, they can, but like in general, like they just want to catch it and hold it. <laughs> right. So he's got this wreck or not raccoon. This squirrel goes limp in his mouth and he's just like, do, 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 do. And I'm like, leave it. And he drops it and it takes off. Um, it's pretty awesome. Have you seen that anyway. meme where it's like uh, the husband and the wife, the wife's like, you spent all of our money on dogs. And he's like, they're golden retrievers, Karen. They <laughs> retrieve gold. I did it for us. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Oh man, it's good times, man. Hey, we've had some good memes on the on the uh, on the feed, by the way. Yeah, let's, let's I'm glad we got the comment section because now people can uh, interact. I like that too. It's it's been nice. We've had some good we've had some good times on there. Um, yeah. So much good going on. Anything else we need to share, Pete? Anything else happening that we should? No, I think that's the uh, the 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 most uh, stuff that we really needed to cover. Just uh, you know, get ready for the tyrants. They're coming for you, not just for your guns, but they want they want obedience. They want you to bend yeah. the knee. Yeah, that's what well, they're looking for. That's exactly right. Um, and uh, for the believing out there, for the faithful Christians, uh, keep in mind that bending the knee to Caesar is ultimately a denial of the lordship of christ don't do that don't give to caesar what belongs to god you belong to god you can obey caesar in a whole lot of things don't obey him when it comes to stuff that only is between you and god so uh, keep that in mind everybody actually check out defytyrants.com if you get the chance uh if you get the chance even matthew true hella uh faithful pastor writing some really good stuff on biblical resistance um and really biblical he's not this crazy let's go to war and kill all these guys it's very much of like hey here's what we are supposed to obey and we better obey on those things where god has commanded us to and on the things where they're telling us to do something else you better defy and he even says like mask like they're they're overstepping their bounds when they're making you wear a mask like defy it like you're not supposed to go along with that 
Anyway, check out. Worth checking out. Um, also, can I give two quick plugs for Lake Erie Arms as we Go jump off of here? Yeah. Uh, so first, obviously, learms.net. We've got Glocktoberfest coming up, which is generally one of the favorite events of the year, uh, especially for the Glock. I really guys. should check head out there for that because that that would just be heaven it's, for me. Well, and honest. and they're a uh, Glock uh, Blue Label dealer, so like e- perfection dealer, e- everything Glock related, and a lot of times the reps from Glock come out just. It's worth checking out. So Glocktoberfest is coming up, but here's the other thing. Um, one of our favorite guys on staff there, Truck Dewey, uh, who is Vietnamese, really good guy, got into guns, came to Ohio, um, just found out that he's got a rare form of cancer. Mm. And uh, he is battling it like crazy, like a champ. Um, but we're doing a benefit for him September 18th. And we are almost out of tickets for the prime rib dinner. We've got gun raffle. We're auctioning off a, uh, a rhino nebula. Have you seen these things, man? Yes. So um, it's beautiful. It's awesome. Uh, auctioning that thing on its own or it's raffling. I'm sorry, raffling that on its own. And then we have a raffle uh, going on for a bunch of other guns, all kinds of awesome stuff. You need, if you can, September 18th, it's going to be in here on Ohio. Um, you you want to come out, um, but you better get your tickets now because we're running out. Um, good stuff. Anyway, all that, check out learms.net and we will see you guys soon. Cool. All right, guys. Talk to you all later. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. All right. You've been listening to the From Concealment Podcast with Pete Mitchell and Dan Sams. Be sure to tune in next week for more gun talk. Also, check out the From Concealment website for more shooting-related goodness at fromconcealment.com.